Welcome back, Wolfpack Brolis here, and I really like the team going on right here. My first thought was, oh, neat. I want to see how this double battle ends up playing out for our second Fan Fridays of the week, and it is going to be against a pretty brutal team from the opponent. I mean, the Suicune Landorus open, and even a Porygon 2. Porygon 2 is such a nasty, nasty little guy. We're going to see how this ends up playing out. So, there we go. We have Landorus and Suicune versus the Volcarona and the Nidoqueen. Now, that's why I was thinking, wow, that's pretty neat right there. Because as I discussed in my guides, Nidoqueen, still a pretty powerful Pokemon, but Nidoking just outclasses it with a little bit better base stats, I think. But the sheer force does throw out some style, and that's Volcarona, already down to the rock slide from Landorus. So, Life Orb as well, so not even a Scarf Landorus, and then Suicune setting up the Tailwind, which means, yeah, the opponent got the setup that it needed. Like, that's just so free right there, but Nidoqueen going to trade that Ice Beam and get the Landorus back. Wow. Alright, so that, that actually was not as disastrous of a first turn as it could have been. So we do have the ta Tailwind set up, and that is going to be Blastoise, which means very, very scary things, because Blastoise, it's going to have that boosted Water Spout potential, and that's going to do a lot of damage, but Salamence is going to be able to survive it. Mega Blastoise as well. Alright, the opponent is going for some pretty crazy stuff, and I just want to see how this is responded to. Now, depending on the Salamence set as well, that can turn into quite a quite a combo. So, get to see the Mega Salamence. Is it just going to be like double edge, single target, monstrous damage? Going to go for that Protect. I was about to say, could have the Hyper Voice, could have all sorts of things. And we are going to have Reflect set up from the Suicune. So, ultimate support Suicune, just Tailwind Reflect. And there's the Water Spout, so... Nidoqueen is unfortunately going to get caught out by that, and that is going to be way too powerful of a move to survive. Nidoqueen does go down, and now Sceptile on the on the field. All right, Sceptile is going to make this one interesting because it's not a Mega Sceptile because the Mega Pokemon's right there. Blastoise is going to protect it up. Salamence going to go for that Double Edge, which is getting protected right there, and Sceptile does have the Swords Dance. So we got Swords Dance Sceptile. That could do something, and the Mirror Coat. Trying to get that prediction on either like a Hyper Voice or maybe some kind of Grass type move. Scald, not going to be very effective, but will burn the Salamence. So that with the uh, Dragon Pulse, or not the Dragon Pulse, the Double Edge, going to be brutal. And there it is right there. That is going to be Red Card on Sceptile. So Dark Pulse from the Blastoise doesn't do a crazy amount of damage. And then we have Porygon 2 coming out. Porygon 2 is going to download, raise its special attack, but Salamence going to throw out the double edge onto the Porygon 2. Oh, after the burn. Just no damage, and the reflect. This Suicune is meant to just stop everything. And the Tailwind's going to peter out right there, so Sceptile going to get the outspeed because of that unburdened ability into the Leaf Blade. And that's power right there. Mm, crit probably didn't matter, super effective after the Swords Dance boosting. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's something really good about red card with any kind of unburdened Pokemon. The combo potential is real. A little bit of damage from the critical hit, but it really doesn't mean anything, because it doesn't get over the burn. Uh, it goes through the Reflect, though, and that's kind of it. So now we have Blastoise on the field with the Porygon 2. Sceptile's going to have Drain Punch, so actually, Drain Punching on the Porygon 2. Not enough damage to knock it out, though. Gonna get a little bit of health back, and now we have to see Salamence with the Rock Slide. Is it going to cause a flinch here? Because that's kind of the only thing that could go well. So Dark Pulse, that's going to be headed for the Salamence. I'm not sure about that decision. Porygon 2 does get flinched. So yeah, now we have it to where Sceptile versus the World. We already know that Blastoise doesn't really do everything to... Oh yeah, that's right, the uh, Reflect was making it to where Porygon 2. We know that Blastoise doesn't do too much to the Sceptile. And Porygon 2 looks like it doesn't have Protect, so the Drain Punch going to heal up Sceptile just a bit. I'm pretty sure we, we can see where this is going. So that is going to be Dark Pulse. Looks like with Water Spout, no Ice Beam on that Blastoise, which is kind of interesting. And then Leaf Blade for the KO. So yeah, the Drain Punch actually keeping Sceptile alive just enough to survive everything, which is pretty wild. And that's, that's the battle right there. So Mega Blastoise, like the opponent, had a filthy, just filthy setup, and man, it was very unfortunate, like Mega Salamence did nothing, now could you imagine if that was just anything, like um, a Mega Mawile, a Mega Kangaskhan, those Pokemon would get completely shut down by that open, and then it just goes into the Water Spout Blastoise. Now this actually does remind me of some early, early Pokemon tournaments, 
where this one guy he brought like Amoongus with Sp uh, with Rage Powder and Spore, and then just Water Spout Blastoise, and that was pretty hard to stop. So fortunately, with the Salamence and the Sceptile, was able to tank up the damage and kind of cause Blastoise to go into some mix-ups. But that's what we have right there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this battle for Fan Fridays. The Unburdened Sceptile did a lot. It did a lot. I hope you all have a nice day. Thank you for watching.